NDTV and you are watching NDTV Prime. Welcome to CNB Bazaar Buzz. I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. It's an action-packed episode because we've got lots coming your way. And yes, the blue Echo Sport is back on the program. Why? Well, price announcement. That was the one big piece of the puzzle that was still missing. We've got those details for you coming up and plenty more. Here's what's on today's program. The Jeep Compass Petrol Automatic Review, finally here. The Ducati Monster 797 and BMW's GS Trophy in Goa. It's a nice different setting for a car launch, not in a five-star hotel, which is always welcome under natural light at that. And yes, the prices of the new EcoSport, guess what, big news. They remain unchanged, despite the fact that you have so much more that's been added onto the new updated facelifted version of this car. So react to that for sure. The prices are on your screens. And now let's move on to the Jeep Compass Petrol, the other SUV that's been making lots of noise because of its good prices. Well, the Petrol is a car that was going to be delivered later. Most of us hadn't got our hands on it. And we certainly have enjoyed our time spent with the Petrol. And what's more, the automatic as well. Here's my review. The Jeep Compass launched with much fanfare and has been a runaway hit for Fiat Chrysler Automobiles India. Even exports of the car have already begun from India since it's only made here for all right-hand drive markets across the world. Over the last few months, there's so much we've said about the Jeep Compass. Everybody knows it's a big success and that car has a long waiting period as well. This is the one that you've all been wanting to know more details about though. Looks just like the regular Compass. Well, of course it is, but this is the petrol variant and the automatic. Something that many of you have been curious about and so have we. The Compass looks great. Its true SUV proportions and Jeep DNA make it look a lot bigger than it really is. The great stance is well complemented by the two-tone roof on the limited option variant. Though even in single colour, it looks really great. The fact that it is fun to drive only enhances its terrific appeal. My test car in red and black looks especially sexy, I have to say, as the black roof also plays well with the chrome accents and plastic cladding all around. The car had launched in multiple variants, but it was announced at the very start that the petrol compass would be delivered only later in the year. Well, deliveries began last month and I got my hands on one a few days ago. And what's more, I also got the automatic variant since many of you have been very curious about that too. Jeep only offers the automatic on the 1.4 multi-air turbo petrol and it comes in three variants that are all front wheel drive only as just the diesel gets the all wheel drive. The base sport petrol comes with manual transmission and the top spec limited and limited option only with the automatic. And of course, it's the last one that I have with me. The 1.4 multi-air is a Fiat engine and it delivers 161 bhp and 250 nm of peak torque. The base, like I said, has that six-speed manual and the top end with me the seven-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox. Now the engine choice did surprise many when it was first revealed, didn't it? So the big curiosity has been around whether or not this 1.4-litre engine will be enough for this car. Is the car too big, the engine too small? Will it match up to the performance levels of the larger diesel? Well, you know what? People have been randomly saying that it's under par without even driving the car. I have driven it and I can tell you, it isn't. It's a lot of fun. Having said that, I must add that even though the engine is surprisingly punchy, it is a bit of a slow starter as there is a hint of lag under 2000 RPM. But things get effortless thereafter. The 7-speed DDCT also does the job really well. It's well mated to this engine. Gear changes are fairly imperceptible and uh, you'll find that it's really smooth 
both when you're trying to push it a little bit on the highway gets up to higher speeds also nice and smooth but more so in city traffic as well while it's very smooth through the changes it gets a bit slow in response in heavy bumper to bumper traffic at times it certainly has the smoothness to go with the compass's premium appeal though as well as its excellent ride quality yes like its diesel counterpart the petrol 2 has the ability to swallow up mostly anything that comes its way and can take on potholes or bad roads with ease the steering feels a tad heavier but the 17 inch wheels glide over mostly all rough surfaces with no complaints the petrol and diesel look identical of course and the same holds true for the interior except for the auto gear shift we have already run you through the features in our previous in depth review on the diesel compass the petrol auto is only available on the higher specs like i said and that's a bit odd i'd have gone with the complete top end limited option and then maybe a longitude trim instead of just the limited but even so the car is still reasonably attractively priced at 19 lakh 67000 rupees for the top end 18 lakh 96000 for the limited and with those you get lots of goodies including the touch screen with apple carplay and android auto the near white premium looking seats and the climate control the base sport petrol is the entry variant of the compass lineup in india at 15 lakh 16000 rupees all prices are ex showroom delhi So the Jeep Compass now in petrol and automatic continuing to get a lot of viewer interest and certainly buyer interest too. Let's move on now and talk about the most affordable Ducati in the Monster range anyway and if you leave the Scrambler out then overall too it's the 797 Monster it is the all new bike that's just recently been launched it's got lots of new parts and it's also very torquey and fun to ride as King Shukdatta found out. The Ducati Monster 797 is the company's only bike which targets first-time performance motorcycle buyers apart from the Scrambler range. The company claims that it is a perfect bike for somebody to upgrade from a 300cc or a 400cc bike. We got some saddle time with the Monster 797 and here's what we feel about the bike. One look at the Monster 797 and you can make out that the bike has loads of attitude. The design and styling is similar to that of the other monsters. Big tank, brawny looks and the exposed trellis frame give it a monster of a road presence. Therefore, the last factor of the bike gets a solid thumbs up from us. The Monster is Ducati's entry level performance bike and therefore Ducati has skimmed on a few fancy features such as ride by wire riding modes and traction control but what you do get is ABS and an LCD instrumentation console the LCD display misses out on a fuel gauge and a gear position indicator some things that should have been a must even though the monster 797 is ducati's most affordable bike it doesn't skim on the bare essentials it has kayaba 41mm usd forks up front a sax monoshock at the rear It's short with sticky Pirelli Dabler Rosso tires and has Brembo discs all around. Additionally, you also get an LED positioning lamp on the headlamp and an LED tail lamp. Our test bike came fitted with LED indicators, a rear seat cowl, and a fly screen on the headlamp, instantly making the bike look even sportier. All of which were optional. So for an entry-level bike. It is not all show and no go. The engine on the Monster 797 is the same as the Ducati Scrambler's. It's an 803 cc L twin motor, which is air cooled but churns out a decent 72 brake horsepower at 8,250 RPM. and makes a peak torque of 67 newton meters at 5750 rpm the exact same figures as the scrambler 
The Gearbox 2 is the same as the Scrambler, a six-speed unit. Our riding experience of the Monster 797 revealed that the engine is punchy. The meat of the torque comes in quite early on the rev range. One can cruise at high speeds on low RPMs and also there's ample power on tap should you twist the throttle. The bike delivers the power in a measured way, not so swiftly that a newbie will be alarmed and neither so slowly that the bike loses out on the fun quotient. But the bike is vibey though. You scrum through the gears and accelerate hard and feel the vibrations getting to you through the palm grips and the fuel tank. And there's the perennial problem of the engine heat, making things uncomfortable in traffic if you're thinking of doing the daily commute. The suspension is stiffer than we would have liked. You will feel all the ruts, bumps and potholes riding up your spine, especially at city speeds. Although it makes for a slick handling machine, the bike can cut through traffic as easy as any 150cc to 200cc commuter or even a scooter for that matter. Show it a set of corners and you'll see that the bike is more than happy to take them on. The Pirelli tyres prove their worth here. The Monster 797 is priced at 8.05 lakh rupees ex showroom Delhi and its chief rivals are the frighteningly powerful Kawasaki Z900 and the cool sophisticated Triumph Street Triple S. The Ducati Monster 797 is a bike which does what it's meant to beautifully. If you're looking to upgrade from a 300cc or a 600cc bike and want to add a Ducati to your garage, the Monster makes for the perfect buy. You're seeing of course once again the two new colours in the Echo Sport lineup. Canyon Ridge and Lightning Blue. We'll take a short break here on CNB Bazaar Buzz and be back with answers to your questions and BMW's GS Trophy.